this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at an independent role-playing game. This week I'm going to take a look at a game that's barely an RPG, but I kind of want to cover it anyway, Darkwood. Developed and published by Acid Wizard Studio, it was recently released on Steam after some time available in pre-release, and as of this recording, is available for $14.99 US. Darkwood is, frankly, far more survival horror sandbox than RPG, of a sort that reflects the popularity of such games just a few years back. However, while it includes crafting and base reinforcements and upgrades and so forth, it does not focus on micromanaging things like hunger and thirst, but rather managing time to gather resources and construct things to weather the oncoming night. Further, Darkwood has an actual storyline, one which is discovered through exploration and interaction with various NPCs, and which gives driving goals to the basic survival premise. The prologue puts you in the role of a mad doctor in a haunted wood, where you come across an unconscious man, find a key on them, and then take them to your hideout to question them on how to get out of the wood. After this, however, you are then put into the role of the one the doctor had found, and now it's up to you to find your way out of that same wood. From a gameplay perspective, everything is point and click. You're just a lone character in an open world. There's no ability scores, just health and stamina. You can wander the world, opening containers and gathering resources from the environment, which can be crafted into basic items by opening the inventory or into more complex items by returning them to a crafting station at your base. Your base generates a field that repels enemies, but it's not foolproof, so you'll still want to reinforce your home by barricading windows and repairing doors and setting traps. Upgrading crafting stations can allow for more equipment types to be crafted, as well as allow certain equipment types to be upgraded. For instance, a basic weapon, such as a board with nails, can be strengthened, have more nails added, etc. NPCs may also be found, either by showing up at your base or discovered out in the wilds. Many will have conversation options, or allow you to show them certain items you find, which may reveal hints and tips, or more details of the story itself. They may also allow for trading, which can give you access to critical components. Exploration and survival are broken into two main phases. During the day, you can wander the forest, seeking out more resources and leads. There may be occasional wildlife and even monsters during the daylight hours, but in general the daytime is much safer. At least, so long as you stay away from certain indoors or underground areas. There's a field of view mechanic in addition to dynamic lighting, meaning that your character can only really see what they're facing, so you'll find yourself constantly turning around to see if something is sneaking up behind you. In dark areas, you'll also need a light source, which can preclude using weaponry in these areas. Fortunately, some light sources can serve as basic weapons themselves, such as torches. Once night falls, however, it would behoove you to be near your base, because stronger beasts come out in force. Even with the monster-repelling field generated at your base, strange things may begin to happen within it, which will keep most folk on their toes. If something does manage to take you down, the effects vary depending on your difficulty settings. Under normal settings, you'll drop some items and be returned to your base. This is a creepy game. Graphically, the art style lends itself to a nightmarish feel, and even though the top-down view may seem a little bit depersonalized, the way that the lighting and field of view are handled generally makes this one one of the most atmospheric and somewhat claustrophobic games I've seen in a while, and it adds a lot of tension to even basic exploration. The sound design is likewise excellent, with sound effects making everything from your own character's interactions with the environment to activities going on around them stand out that much more. The musical cues are little more than atmospheric highlights from time to time, but they do tend to swell during times of danger or during the end of the night, marking time and building up a sense of danger or dread at very appropriate moments. Is this game an RPG? Well, it doesn't have the character statistics you'd expect, but with the upgradable crafting system and the storyline itself, it does provide a sense of advancement, as well as a true sense of playing a role, albeit one in a horror theme. It's certainly closer to an RPG than some of the games I've viewed in the past. Is it worthwhile? Well, I have to say that artistically, this game nails the atmosphere and general horror tropes it tries to, while avoiding the more annoying elements of survival games in general. 
If you like horror-themed games with RPG elements, then honestly, I think this is one of the better ones of the last year or so. Although if you can't handle them, then you're probably going to want to give this one a miss. But yeah, this is yet another very solid game with a very decent price point. And with that, I'll leave it here. Link will be in the description below. As always, this has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday, Darkwood. If you like what you've seen, please leave a like, comment if you've got feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content. If you're feeling particularly generous, please feel free to take a look at my Patreon at patreon.com slash rpgcrawler or through the links at the end of the video. Until next time, take care and... Goodbye!